for those of you who love a Monday. There are five Mondays in January. When I'm thinking about podcast episodes, I normally think in fours. And so I actually had a nice space here this week. And I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to do a little bit of a January review and start the year as we mean to go on and do those monthly reviews. And This is the Executive Coach Podcast with me, Maya Goodka, where I help you tune in to work and lives that feel spacious, successful, and aligned with who you truly are. Having worked with hundreds of leaders, I know that when we're properly supported and with great prioritization and planning, we really can have it all with ease. So let's stop the overwork and dive in. I would love you guys to join me in the monthly reviews this year. I've talked about how valuable they can be in various episodes this month. Definitely go and check those out if you haven't heard those. If you are new around here, welcome. Definitely drop me a note. Let me know if you already do a monthly review or if you're going to tackle one now that we've talked about it on the podcast. I would love to hear that stuff. And so what I thought is I would remind those of you who are familiar with my process or share my very simple monthly review process with you and then take you through a little bit of a review of what's been working for me this January and put that into a a few themes. The review process is really, I think, doable and you just need to get into the habit of it. And it starts with your calendar. So many of us will be using digital calendars to manage workload and invites and all of that. And you'll probably have a dominant one, which is your truth, your source of truth. So we want to go to that. And that is going to contain various work elements and hopefully also out of work elements, personal life things that will have been going on in the month of January. And all we need to do is get a note in our planner, a page in our planner and download from that month that we've just had. Just go week by week and have a look at what's been salient, what has been a good achievements, what have been activities that you've been involved with that you've enjoyed and just capture those. And what we're creating here is what Gretchen Rubin calls the to-do list. So rather than a to-do list, we're actually celebrating what we've done, what we've achieved. They can be tiny things and they can be more significant things, but we want to capture them month by month. And these compound over time. And by the time we get to the end of the year, we can really look back with sufficient granularity rather than being overwhelmed when we think of trying to capture everything that happened over the course of the year. So it becomes a beautiful record. And I'm actually going to be using my Apple Notes this year so that I can compile them all in one place and refer to them really easily, as well as have a written version. So I'll start with a written version and then I'm going to be putting that into um, a digital format as well well. So once you've done that, the next stage then is to refer back if you have created some sort of a intention for the year. So you might have had some key goals for the overall year and you may have then set some for the month itself. And so my new planner has a monthly prompt which asks me what the key goal is for the month and what some of the three top priority goals are. And I didn't find this straightforward uh, to come up with. I didn't just manage to pluck them out of thin air, but it's a really useful exercise to do that and to just think about the entirety of your month. And so the second stage of my process is just to look back at that, see which of those goals you managed to achieve, see which ones perhaps didn't manage to happen and decide what you want to prioritize and take forward into the following year month. You may not keep some of these those ones that didn't happen or you may decide actually they need another prioritization. So that then becomes a really useful input into thinking about your next month and you're all set for that future planning. And that's all that we do in the review process. And I really encourage you to pick a moment on a weekend, perhaps that you get 10 minutes to yourself with a coffee or in a nice corner, sitting on a sofa in a coffee shop if you if that works for you, maybe some nice music and just do that process. And it's a really celebratory process. And it, I really enjoy doing that, really enjoy then having that record. And so I thought I would share some of what has been working for me this month and what, you know, 
how, how that looks. So the starting point to say is that actually work has been quite full on. And so despite the fact that my goals were quite non-work oriented for the first month or two of the of the year work has ended up dominating and as I've talked about in the past when work is really higher up in the prioritization it really does eclipse the other areas quite significantly and so with that in mind I would say that some of that intention and energy that was quite life focused has shifted for me over the course of the month. And I do hope I get to reprioritize that again next month, but I'm also not complaining because it's all good stuff. And so with that backdrop, I'm just going to talk about what did still work for me in the month of January and celebrate that a little bit and think about what made that successful. So I've got three themes. The first one is decluttering. The second one is seasonality. And the third one is organizing. Decluttering. Always a January theme around here. And if, like me, you might even do some other declutters over the course of the year, then I think January can be a time to do a little bit of a deeper exercise in one dimension of your life. So in previous years, I've taken the time to go to my parents' place and collect some of the stuff that is mine that is still, you know, in their spaces and that is taking up space there and saying, actually, I'm going to make sure that I have ownership of all of that and that I've got that in my space. Another year, I've then taken the time to sort that stuff out again and then store it in a way that feels right and feels proper for that stuff. So rather than cramming it away into a corner, I actually put it on some shelves, ones that my kids can access. That stuff now is not buried away and I quite like that. This year, what I've done is I've gone down the eBay route and my kids have reached an age where some of their nicer toys that they had when they were younger uh, are no longer going to be used. We've given them, you know, we've given them a fair go. And often it's at those decluttering times, I bring those toys out and say, do you, do you think you're going to use it? They say, yeah. And then we say, okay, let's try it for another period and then let's review. And there are some of these toys that have just made it few, a few, through a few of those rounds because they are nice, but they, the reality is they don't get played with. And so it was time to shift those. And at this time of year, we have, we use a charity collection service. So you can just book the collection and they will come and pick up all of your charity stuff. So we have that. We also have cousins and family that we distribute stuff to. But what I do notice is that at this time of year, after the whole Christmas overload, especially when you've got kids, no one's really looking for like more hand-me-down toys at this time of year. And I, I certainly don't want to receive them. And so I really, I don't feel to want to be offering those out and people having to potentially politely accept them, but not really want them. I'd rather they went to where they were wanted and could be used. And so I have uh, reignited eBay. I've enjoyed using eBay at different in different times of my life. And the nice thing is that my kids are at a certain age where they can actually go through the items, make sure they're in order, or if there are missing pieces to let me know. Sometimes they, they're the ones that know what's missing if there is, or they know if it's a complete set and could the complete items obviously sell much better or at a better price. And they've helped me package those things up. I've really enjoyed that. People have said maybe use Vinted, but I think, I think you can actually do better for certain items on eBay. So that's how I've taken it a little bit further this year. And I'm still going through the process. I have to say that I then went down more of the auction route because I usually use the buy it now function, but I noticed that some of the toys did better than I thought if I used an auction, but I then had something, I got the cha-ching, uh, you get a sound effect on your phone when it sells. And I was like, can't wait to see what it is. And uh, something had sold for two pounds. So that didn't go so well. And now I'm probably going to have to reconsider my my strategy and whether I use auction for certain items, because it's really not worth it <laughs> uh, when it, when that happens. And you'd rather just have it sitting there listed at a buy it now. So that's a fun little pastime that I'm slowly using where, where I've got items that I think are worth doing now that I'm back in the swing of it. I'm enjoying that. The other part of decluttering is time. So I, I wanted to do a little time sucker audit. And what I ended up doing was canceling some streaming subscriptions. So Netflix, uh, Disney and Apple TV. Apple TV seemed to have lured me back with a three month free bit. And since I'm watching 
the morning show on that. I am going to carry on doing that. So it's a mixture of time and also cutting out the expense of just having streaming services that we're not using, like the Disney one. But I'm just going to see how it goes, not just for me, but also the kids. What's it going to be like for them not to have Netflix? Are they going to use more of like the BBC? What are they going to lean into instead? And just see how that goes. And then the other bit is looking... Or, you know, this is always something that's worth doing every every now and then or periodically, which is just revisiting how I use social media. Obviously, this is something that I published research on. So I'm quite aware of what the pros and cons are and the pitfalls. And some of the research that I found showed that it can be inspirational. It can be a useful source of learning when it's used intentionally. And when it's used for connection, it can enhance well-being. Now, obviously, I also do use social media for my business, uh, LinkedIn, not so much Instagram. So it also has that additional element to it where it is going to be really important in, in the work that I do. So I just wanted to make sure I'm super intentional about how I'm using the different platforms. As it is, I don't typically have either of the apps on my phone. I will install Instagram, use it, and then I will remove it again because otherwise I feel like there's creep for me where if it's there by default, my usage will naturally increase and it will become more of a default activity. But in terms of sources of inspiration, because I'm working on my wardrobe this year, I thought it would be really cool to follow some cool creators on there. And I found that really nice uh, to just see what people are doing. It's just the right platform to be able to understand that stuff. And I just don't think anywhere else would do it that well and give you that source of inspiration and enable you to search for what you need. So like I I was interested in the fact that, you know, I'm not the tallest (laughs) uh, on the block. And so to find other like me who are creating capsule wardrobes, I couldn't then say, well, it's all right for so-and-so because, you know, she's she's like, all the clothes are going to fit her and things like that. So it's nice to be able to find just your type and whoever you are, there's going to be someone making the right content for you on that platform and who's basically targeted you as their niche. And I do really like that. I do really like being targeted in that way and then finding just the right people to follow along like that. And similarly for recipes, I have really been leaning into, again, I think it really suits Instagram, really suits uh, the platform. It makes it look quite easy to make the recipe, which makes you want to try. And it's easy to save stuff as you go along. And so I will come on to the seasonality bit and that kind of cozy vibe. But I've really enjoyed using it as a source of recipes. And I do find that when I then engage or save stuff, it then does show me more of what I like. And I find that really helpful. So it's just about revisiting how these platforms are working for you, where they're adding, where how they can contribute and where there could be some alternatives which perhaps don't have the distracting and addicting elements. And I truly have not found alternatives when it comes to some of what I've described above. I would be really open to hearing if you've got alternatives, uh, but that's how it's working for me. And so We've talked about decluttering. We've talked about just the usual decluttering where we clear out all of the stuff that's built up. Um, I've talked about how I have done the eBay piece on that. But then I've also talked about sort of decluttering time suckers as well and just doing a little bit of a check of what has crept in over the course of a year and which habits have crept in and how you want to perhaps do a bit of a declutter of those as well. So that's what's been working for me in January. The next bit is about seasonal and really embracing seasonal living. And I really appreciated a listener sending me a book recommendation. And this book is called Sacred Seasons by Kirsty Gallagher. And this is the kind of book which I have listened to on Audible, but I probably will get the hard copy because it's one of those that has a lot of facts and information that would be really good to refer back to and serve as a bit of a reference book. To give you an idea of of some of the the vibe of the book, it's really emphasizing what I have talked about on, on here before, which is, you know, what is winter about? And this time of year is not necessarily that time of year that we want to be leaping headlong into new ventures, expecting ourselves to be at the peak of energy, pushing ourselves from a you know energy perspective. And if we do, we also risk actually burning out before that real seasonal new year 
that March spring energy is upon us. And that would be a shame because that would be the ideal time from a seasonal perspective to be really embracing new and new beginnings. So she talks about all of this in more detail. She also talks about the lunar cycle and she just gives loads of tips and rituals for ways to work with the different seasons. So I find that a really nice companion at this time of year. And I really appreciate that um, recommendation from a listener and, you know, do send other such recommendations. It's so nice to learn from you guys. The other thing that I found as I looked into this more is actually that in the olden days, until Julius Caesar, the calendar did go till March. And so that's why we have Septem, Octo, Novem, and Decem, which was a bit of a light bulb moment. You know, that stands for seven, eight, nine, ten, because then January and February were the final months. And actually, there were 13 months. So that also shifted. But just, you know, it is funny that we've got those Latin origins of these months and yet they're out of sync with our current months you know so decem around 10 is now associated with the 12th month of the year so actually this was the way that it used to work and again i think it's interesting to acknowledge that when we're thinking about new year and and what each season is good for and so i say embracing this time of year for more of that inward work doing that vision work, doing that envisioning, not needing to take all the action, embracing the fact that we physically need more sleep, that the natural world is hibernating, and also taking the time to be able to do that more preparatory work and that organizing, again, feels really fitting of the season. We've had some brutal Januaries, but where I've had the choice this January, where we've had an opportunity to to influence how we want to spend that time, we have lent into the more cozy, snuggly, PJs on early, having more of the baths, having more of the doing doing the skincare. And I've really enjoyed all that. Lighting the candles, that's also been really nice. I've really enjoyed embracing that seasonal element and folding that into the way that I've been thinking about goals and thinking about how to set the year up for success. And that's really been working for me. The one other piece of that is embracing the circadian rhythm and saying, yes, I want to have more sleep. So I've not been forcing myself up earlier than I absolutely need to, but I have been forcing myself or making sure, or it's been a non-negotiable, even when it was super cold to get outside for that um, walk in the morning to just set the circadian rhythm up, get the cortisol, at the right time of day activated or released it released uh, and just knowing that that was also part of having that good rhythm and then being prepared for and embracing a really good night's sleep as well and setting setting ourselves up for good sleep so I've really been enjoying that The final bit is organizing and what's been working for me on that front. So again, this organizing is my theme of Q1. And I have had a couple of priorities along that front. So things like getting certain holidays booked, financial stuff. And what I've tried to do is I've tried to prioritize the stuff which I know is bit of a drag. It's a little bit, I've got a bit of resistance to it. I've tried to prioritize it early in the week and early in the day of those weeks and then allow myself the proper time to set myself up for success and break the back of it. So if that means going for an energizing walk, sitting down with a coffee and then really giving it my focus time, I've done that. Even though some of this stuff is not, doesn't feel like that needle moving or core deep work stuff, or it's not super urgent. What I've said is given that that is important to my quarterly goals and given that I don't naturally, I'm not naturally drawn to some of it, or it seems a bit overwhelming, I'm going to really prioritize that early in the week. And when I have done that, for example, with the tax return, I I knew that as I went into January, that was kind of hanging over my head. And so I wanted to tackle that quite early. I blocked out the time broke the back of it. And I just felt so much better. Like it wasn't hanging on me anymore. I felt satisfied that I had got my head around it. And after that, it was just about following up and having a really good list of follow-up activity. I also, rather than sort of treating it as a chore and then 
not labeling things properly and rushing it. And then it's hard to find the following year and things. I really tried to take a bit more pride in the way I labeled things and just take that extra bit of time and, and do it justice. And so I think that was also, you know, it's part of enjoying the process and saying, actually, once you've got into it, once you've got your head around it, turning it into something that feels a little bit more enjoyable that you take a bit more pride in. So that's been working for me. And I just wanted to check if there was anything else that I had to say there. Yeah, as we enter February, I'm going to be starting to talk a little bit about health and fitness, going to be having some conversations around that. I still certainly have a lot that I want to be doing on the organization front. Like I said, it has been slightly eclipsed by work for me, but it's also been nice to acknowledge what has happened on that front because there's always more that's happened than we sort of give ourselves credit for, right? Or that we think. And it's only when we take the time to list it out and see it on the page that we can really appreciate what has happened over the course of a particular month. So let me know how your process goes. And if anything from there resonates, I always love to hear your messages, even if it's just something silly around eBay. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. And I look forward to connecting with you next time. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to the Executive Coach Podcast with me, Maya Goodker. If you've been listening to the show and you feel ready to take your work and life to the next level, you want to accelerate the process or you're feeling a little bit stuck or you've got some blockers, the easiest and the most accessible way to get started is through my Vision Builder program where you will receive intensive one-to-one coaching with me as well as a lot of other awesome resources. Drop me a DM on LinkedIn. I'm easy to find there as Maya Goodka or send me an email. The email is detailed below in the show notes. Just put one word into the subject title or into the message, which is vision, and I will send you the details. Or if you're considering working with me via your organization, just drop me a message to the same places with the words executive coach, and we can arrange some time to discuss your specific needs. I can talk you through my one-to-one and team coaching services and also now my popular one or two hour live workshop which is entitled career growth in a hybrid or virtual world i started running this last year in 2023 it's gone down a storm it seems to really hit the nail on the head for organizations who want to invest and support their employees on career growth who want to have an impact on as many employees as possible but they also want that Uh, impact to be something tangible. And that's why it's a workshop. So we actually work on the stuff during uh, the one to two hour workshop. It's not something where you hear a load of insights and then go away and have to put them into practice by yourself. We do it together. So that seems to be a really popular way of working with me inside an organization. Um, And you know how to contact me if that's of interest. So with all of that said, I look forward to connecting with you next time. And thanks for listening. Bye bye.